to turn the wick up a little bit here now. South Africa's top athlete, Wade van Niekerk's victory at the recent Rio Olympics was a bone of contention for black and coloured South Africans. There is such a thing. While some coloured people saw this as a victory for them, some in a black community felt Wade's victory was won for black and coloured people inclusively. I felt it was a victory for everybody in South Africa. Some people even took to social media alleging that in post-apartheid South Africa, it still feels as if the country is only represented from two perspectives, either black or white. And anyone else basically, well, they don't exist. Now, to unpack the so-called color debate, I'm joined by a, a social commentator, Dr. Leonard Martin, and then Anthony Philip Williams, chairperson of the Indigenous First Nation Advocacy South Africa. Very good morning to you, gentlemen. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for being here. Good morning, Evan, and good morning to the viewers. And, and then in the far corner, Elvis Preslin is with us just to give us his five cents. Yes, yeah, so I'll be in the peanut gallery in and the chatting peanut to you gallery guys. But, well. uh, and, and, and of course, there is a very important question that we want to pose, because we want to take that question on Wait for Nikak. And yeah, uh, I, want to, yeah. I want to talk about this. Let's look at the Wait for Nikak debate. Some suggesting, well, some on social media have been very strong about that, that when there are negative connotations, then... We are coloured, because that's what I am. But when there are positives, such as the world record broken at the Olympics by Wade van Niekerk, then they are black or South African. Gentlemen, let's start there. What do you say to that? Well, I think the, 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 this provides an opportunity to South Africa to begin lifting the veil on assumptions and stereotypes. Mm -hmm. uh, South Africa should welcome the achievements of uh, Wayne van Niekerk. First of all, in his own right, but also in terms of the community that he comes from, mm. that uh, he has actually uh, uh, come so far. But it also provides us with an opportunity to look deeper at uh, the reactions and responses. Uh, Wade van Niekerk actually provided his community with the space of a positive symbol, which is sorely lacking in these communities that he comes from. But at the same time, it has opened uh, uh, the discourse and debate for us to clarify how these stereotypes yeah. afflict South Africa and what, what lies at the bottom of these stereotypes. Now, I think we have to say from the outset that the notion of coloured uh, and the notion of black both emerge from a deep colonial history yeah. where images matter and the question is who has shaped these images? Mm -hmm. Secondly, what do these uh, images mean within real social political time, uh, because we can dismiss something, mm -hmm. but let us look at the root causes as to why they in fact live within our cultures. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if I could uh, just come in there, Dr. Martin, um, we, we, should, uh, we should debunk the, the whole uh, uh, race identity issue. I think this the is label, you the mean. labeling at, at least, yes. you know? I think this is a, it's, it's a mess. Uh, it is, it's, 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 it's startling, it's shocking that a democratic dispensation would, you know, perpetuate something that was, that is a, a, that is a, a, a bureaucratic uh, invention of, of the past. It, it yeah. doesn't, it's just nonsensical. It was it an apartheid invention. Absolutely. Event, absolutely. Invention. And then what we have done is we, we, we have endorsed it. And you it know, was designed to divide to divide people. And, and we are perpetuating that. So, um, so, so if you talk about uh, uh, Wade van Niekerk and you talk about the colored identity, which we, we, we reject outrightly, you know, but we don't want to, you've got to reject something and then you've got to, you've got to explain, you've got to yeah. let people know. There's a, there's a whole in, insight, a whole program of, of education and conscientizing that needs to happen yeah. that is missing. But we cannot, we cannot uh, advance uh, and support, you know, the narrow, stereo stereoty narrow stereotypes of colored, we're not black, we were not black, black enough now, we were not white enough. We cannot adv keep on advancing those kind of stereotypes. It's just, it's just not going to help us. But Wade's um, uh, outstanding and exceptional uh, um, response, uh, you know, within his, 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 his discipline has uh, is, is, is given all of us, uh, you know, an, an opportunity to have an honest discussion. Yes. 
That's the key. Elvis, now, you have a point. Now, the, the point is very important here because that honest discussion that you're talking about is what we are asking the question this, this morning, and that is about race labeling. Is there still such a thing, Dr. Martin, and should we take away this apartheid slave mentality? Well, I think, you know, uh, a democratic South Africa, uh, and we have to say it, as you say, uh, honestly, has mistakenly re-inscribed the race idea within our constitution. It's a very difficult thing to, to, to actually admit, but we have, in fact, uh, re-inscribed the notion of race in our constitution. We have to start there and have a discussion. But let us come to the issue of uh, the, the uh, concept colored. What our people don't know is that this term has a global history. It has its roots in uh, the Indo-European conquests that started in India and was followed up by European conquests, Western European conquests uh, of Africa. And within that con uh, context, uh, terms were created to enslave, first of all, those whose lands were conquered, but also to create stereotypes to sustain a new social and political structure that was created starting in India and coming to Africa, particularly South Africa. That is where we locate the term colored. But the term colored veils mm -hmm. the whole notion of location of people who were enslaved, what happened to their land. And as we know, uh, slaves do not, are not meant to have memories. Mm -hmm. Slaves are not meant to have genealogies. And this is what has happened to uh, what has now become the color population in South Africa the state that arose actually endorsed the actual uh, cultural, political, and economic enslavement of a people. Mm -hmm. And we, that is the location for the social and political uh, trauma mm -hmm. and contradiction that we find in our country. Mm -hmm. That genealogy that Dr. Martin is talking about, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, uh, Dr. Seth Cooper earlier mentioned that 90% of the population worldwide has got a Khoisan gene. As the indigenous first, what do you say to that? Does that come as a surprise? You, you, you see, absolutely not, because there is, uh, uh, there is empirical evidence that, uh, that, uh, the, that we are the givers of life, you know, so to speak, as it were. Uh, and there is enough, uh, there's enough uh, uh, genetics does not, uh, ca does not lie. Uh, they, it's found uh, that uh, so many people out in Australia, across the world, Europeans have got more uh, uh, Khoisan, uh, Khoisan uh, genes within them. Um, so you see, it's uh, uh, something that's it's very interesting. It's the, if you take the weight for Nikar, can you juxtapose that to uh, the Correctional Services 7? Um, case just the other day that uh, where you see where th there's this this this, uh, um, this uh, the contradictions within uh, within South Africa. Mm. On the one side, South Africa uh, ululates. There's an, uh, 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 there is an excitement. Wait for Nikar has broke uh, broke uh, broken the record, and Wait for Nikar now is a South African. He belongs to all of us, and we agree with that sentiment. That's the way it's for Nikar belongs to all of us. We've got to break the stereotypes. But it is also interesting uh, and, uh, and, and sad uh, all at the same time that the same government that, uh, that celebrates um, the, 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 the excellence of Wait for Nikar is the same government that take uh, seven uh, colored um, correctional services officers to court because they are supposedly oversubscribed in a particular given geographical area. Mm -hmm. they, these, are, these are serious contradictions. You, you cannot, how do you, how do you justify, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this? Um, it's what, what, what I said, it is reprisal versus praise. How do you, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you justify this? Well, it's obvious that we say the colored the colored, uh, the, the term colored is a problem. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Am I rightly? Yeah. It's uh, both a scientific problem and yeah. a cultural problem. Absolutely. A scientific and a cultural problem. Then what is next? But it's not just the colored term that is uh, problematic. Uh, we don't believe that there is, there, is a, there is people called black. We don't believe there's black people. It is, these are, uh, these are, uh, uh, these are, <laughs> exactly, these are, in fact, it's contradictory terms. Uh, it's got no place in, in such a, uh, in a democratic uh, environment. Yeah. We've got to do 
something all of us equally have to have this discourse so that we can debunk all of these colonial uh, labels and we that have we've been to, put on. We have to understand that we are African, both genetically and culturally. Absolutely. I mean, let me just come back to the question of uh, white European identity. Mm -hmm. The first people uh, in Europe were called the, uh, the uh, Grimaldians. Mm -hmm. And the Grimaldians were the Khoisan people from Africa. So before you have a white Europe, you actually have the Khoisan in Europe. I mean, all this can be scientifically uh, proven today and is being written about with all the artifacts and research that's being done. So the notion of, of, of white, you know, has to be interrogated as well. As we are discussing the issue of black and colored, the notion of white should not be privileged. Yeah. I mean, from a scientific point of view, uh, the, the color white reflects color. So in real scientific terms, if we look at black and white, <clears throat> the real colors really are white people. If we look at it scientifically, <laughs> if we come to the ideological direction, colored people in South Africa are descendants of the first people in Africa, which are the Khoi and San, you know. Now, what colonialism has done, it has settled us with false notions of race. It has settled us with false notions of uh, division, which sustain a hierarchy Absolutely. of uh, who is at the top and who is at the bottom. Yeah. So we need to unpack this in order to fight uh, racism effectively because all these false notions have actually been sustained mm -hmm. to create relations yeah. that divide people. How do we untangle and demystify all these race labels, uh, uh, Mr. Williams? Um, I think uh, what, what, uh, what's important is uh, perhaps one should uh, talk about what could be termed uh, conceptual cleansing. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's an important, uh, it's an important process. Are you talking about slaughtering? Or what are you <laughs> <laughs> Con conceptual <laughs> cleansing. Conceptual Does that mean cleansing. we start again? <laughs> you see, that's exactly what we need to do because it's exactly the same issue with, uh, with, with, with the, the rainbow notion. You know, it's, a, it's been a deception, uh, you know, the, to, to even suggest that people, that this is a rainbow nation, a nation was, was really, it was a good uh, uh, intention from the Archbishop, but yeah. <laughs> really, in, in essence, in real term, uh, it's an it's, 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 it's intangible objective. You, you can, you're simply saying that you, you're asking for something that you are never going to achieve. W within the concept, then, of social cohesion, mm -hmm. how is this attainable? Is it, a, a, is it a, a, another CODESA? Is it another TRC? I'm talking within the, within the social cohesion concept. Yeah. I think it's very important to understand that uh, in order to achieve social cohesion, it cannot be achieved and sustained mm -hmm. on a false basis. Here we have uh, social structures that have been given a certain life mm -hmm. based on ideological false notions of who people are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have false social categories, mm -hmm. you know, social constructs. Uh, these identities have been constructed to serve certain social and economic uh, and political purposes. In order to have that CODESA mm -hmm. that will deal with the social, I mean the conceptual cleansing, mm -hmm. we need to have a dialogue in our society. Mm -hmm. If we say we are genuinely opposed to racism and racialism, we must go to the core of the etymology. What are the root, uh, roots of these words? For example, um, there is a great uh, 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 alienation in our society mm -hmm. where colored people feel they are no longer part of this democracy. Mm -hmm. We are playing with fire to pretend that it is not deep, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Secondly, we have notions of racial authenticity. Mm -hmm. Whites feel that uh, they are racially authentic, mm -hmm. but yes. it's also imposed on others. Mm -hmm. Yes, they also feel that they are victimized in South Africa today. There's a lack of opportunity mm -hmm. for them and there's a, what they call, if you read social media, mm -hmm. reverse apartheid being practiced on them. So all of these things we have to come to terms well, with. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you have to diagnose, diagnose any disease, racialism is a deep disease in our social political fabric. Mm -hmm. And for the next generations, the responsibility of our leaders uh, uh, in this generation is to clear the mm -hmm. ground in order for a healthy humanity mm -hmm. to take place, to actually redesign, reconfigure yeah. our social space 
in order for that equality, but also human self-respect to begin to grow again. At the moment, we are not having that. Mm -hmm. You see, can I ask you, as a, the chairperson of the Indigenous First Nation Advocacy South Africa grouping, to give us your final remarks on this discussion? You see, for us, it's important that we go back to the drawing board. But the drawing board uh, has got to do with the foundation. There's, you cannot build, there's nobody uh, that builds anything on, uh, on the surface. Because if you build it on the surface, you have what you currently have. Yeah. You begin, you begin to see how the cracks are coming up and, uh, and this country is beginning to disintegrate. The, the foundation of it all is to come back and identify and have an honest discussion. Who are these people called colored? Uh, why are they called bo uh, Busman uh, in, in, in different pockets and in corners? Yeah. Let's have that discussion. Why were they called? Why they, even amongst themselves do they call themselves bushes? Bushy. Something tells us there is something missing. Mm. And until we have that honest discussion, and that's got to do with the foundation um, and the fabric of, society, uh, of, uh, of this country, until you dig in there, you can forget about it. Final words. Well, I think, I think we need to go back and demystify. <clears throat> we have a situation in our history where South Africa still has a lingering understanding that this country, modern South Africa, has had white founding fathers. Yeah. We've never had white founding fathers. Yes. The, the founding population mm -hmm. of this country has been the Khoi and San population. Mm -hmm. We need to go back and fill the gap mm -hmm. because yeah. the Khoi and San population have been written out Artists. of South Africa's history. history. Mm -hmm. And then you supplant mm -hmm. uh, that history with the notion of colored yeah. to break off, to de-link uh, these people from their African history. Absolutely. We have to go back and lay the foundation for a healing mm -hmm. that first and foremost, a liberated South Africa must reestablish itself on its African roots. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not contentious because it is the Absolutely. given history of this continent yeah. that if we do not remove the colonial premises mm -hmm. for our identities, yeah. we're having for, heading for serious conflict as has happened elsewhere. We cannot build a modern, non-racial, democratic South Africa on colonial foundations. Mm -hmm. We have to begin clearing up that space in order for self-respect and humanity to be re-established. Those, Elvis, uh, yeah, I see you nodding there in, in agreement. What do you say on this? You, you've got your 15 seconds to... <laughs> I can't agree more with a good doctor. This labeling, this, 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 this notion that there is uh, uh, black people and colored people should be gone. But the interesting thing that I take from this conversation is that white people, you are the real coloreds. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, of course, our question of the day today, our question of the day deals exactly with this issue. Apartheid race labels is what we're asking you. There it is. Are South Africans still trapped in apartheid race labels? And is that causing us all the hurt? And are we trying to build this on top of a colonial past, uh, which Dr. Martin says is where all the problems begin. We stop. It's not a scenario of the, this country or this continent was built when colonials arrived. What happened long before?